Hey everyone, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm here with, today with Tijani. Hello. Hi, Christian. Thank you very much for having me today. It's great to have you, and I know that we're uh, we're we're both feeling slightly under the weather, but hopefully this should be good. So, yeah, of course. <laughs> well, for folks that don't know who you are, where you are, and what you do, why don't you give us that introduction? Okay, perfect. So uh, my name is uh, Tijani Belmansour. I'm um, a cloud solution architect. I work uh, for a, a consulting company uh, called uh, Kofomo. You may see the logo just behind me. <laughs> I'm in a wonderful meeting room right now. So um, I'm also a Microsoft MVP um, for the Azure category uh, since uh, 2019. Um, what else is about me? I'm uh, based in uh, Quebec City, Canada. So I'm uh, basically a, a French speaking guy <laughs> trying to speak English. So uh, <laughs> sorry in advance if my English is not so good. <laughs> I, I'm doing my best. <laughs> that sounds great. No, and, and we have, a, you know, a, there's a number of MVPs that are up in the region. I always loved at the MVP summits. Well, in fact, so you became an MVP before the pandemic. So did you yeah. get to attend one of the in-person events, the summits? No, unfortunately, no. Oh. I, I didn't uh, yet have this uh, pleasure. Uh, why? Because when I was nominated, it was back in uh, August 2019. So the MP summit was already uh, 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 passed. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah um, crossing it's, it's my finger. I, I <laughs> hope that they get back to normal. But one of the things that's funny uh, as an American uh, MVP is that I was always very jealous of how organized the Canadian MVPs were and would all get like matching uh, uh, zip up hoodies and, <laughs> and take the, the photos there with the, the red with the white, you know, the leaf on it. And uh, yeah, but it was always really organized. And I appreciated that about the Canadian MVPs. Of course, we never get ourselves together in any category uh, within the U.S. to take a good photo together. But I, I realize there's mo more MVPs in the U.S. than anywhere else, and that would be a lot of people. But even like I was originally a SharePoint MVP, and uh, it, you know, even getting the SharePoint MVPs together, it was never very successful. In getting okay. But anyway, so <laughs> that's something you have look, to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, so, that doesn't mean no, we can't do it. Just right. start a movement. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I, I know that there are a lot of efforts going on. And you can see this with events around the world where I, I think this pent up demand for seeing other human beings in person and going to events. So there's little side social activities with MVPs and other, you know, of course, speakers and stuff for the various events. But there's a concerted effort to get people back together um, on the side and do and do this the, like MVP networking which is great to see. Well, let me, tell me though about your Azure background. So what areas of Azure do you actually focus on? Okay, just before I jump on that question, um, yeah. I want to make a quick uh, comment on the, what you just have said oh, about sure. bringing people together uh, physically. Uh, yeah, we, we missed a lot in-person events for uh, the, the next, uh, the last uh, two years, sorry. Um, I'm, uh, I didn't mention it. I'm the co-organizer of the Azure Quebec community. Yeah, we have about uh, something close to 1,200 members actually, wow. and uh, for the uh, Global Azure 2022, we will host an in-person event. So now that we That's great. can, yeah, no, there's that not we that can... many of them that were being planned that I saw. And for, why don't you tell people what that is? Because it's an annual event. Exactly. Exactly. It's an annual uh, event uh, it's a three-day event it's free it's open to anyone no matter your uh, level of expertise regarding the azure of a platform um, you you are uh, more than welcome to join there's certainly a lot of learning opportunities for anyone and everyone and so it happens all around the world. Yes, before the pandemic, it used to be um, an in-person event. And what's cool about in-person events, it's the, the gathering with people. You have to meet people, make connections, with, uh, which is 
a little bit harder in a virtual event. It's not impossible, but it's a little bit harder. So um, yeah, this, this year we decided since uh, uh, regulation allow us to gather in person, so we decided to host an, um, an in-person event um, on uh, Saturday, May 7, so the, the last day of the uh, Global Azure event. Um, we already found the location, we already found speakers, and now we are working to, uh, to find a sponsor to, to provide uh, food and beverages and, and so on. So, yep. uh, so I've helped organize that event here in my local region. I know that it was, it was sad to see so many, you know, cancellations over the last two years around that, that event. And, uh, and so it's, it's, uh, it, it, so it's, it's what it is for folks too. It's, it's a globally coordinated so that you know, within that span of three days, people go and put on the. We did a full day event, like within that window, and so we could you know, like share resources. We could share. We could have, if there are specific initiatives, and like I'm not plugged into it this year, and so I'm was hoping to attend one of the virtual ones, no. um, but wasn't going to organize something this year. Um, but that's that's another one of those things where. If you want to get involved in your local region, find out if there's not an Azure event happening in the beginning of May in your region, that's something that you can organize. Microsoft provides resources like they there's funds for for buying lunch for everybody. There's swag that's sent out. I mean, so it's it's really nice to go and do. But obviously, I, we're we were hoping to be back in person before we started organizing. And when the first call, like the mention, the reminder for doing the event came out, I think almost everybody globally was still talking about doing virtual. So we just kind of said, ah, we'll wait until next year. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's that's right. So for um, on our side here in Quebec City, what we um, decided to do is to mix virtual with uh, in person. So uh, we're hosting a virtual session on the first and second day, so May 5th and May 6th, and an uh, in-person event on uh, May 7th. So I guess we hope to reach out to as many people as we can. So um, yep. the, some people uh, prefer virtual, some people prefer in-person events, and we, they simply uh, won't show up to a uh, virtual event. Okay, um, but by mixing uh, the the two um, uh, strategies, we hope to reach out to as many people as we can. That's great. That's great. So back to the other question, though. So, what areas of Azure do you focus on? <laughs> okay, so uh, a little bit about my uh, Azure background. So, I started um, uh, um, Looking at Azure back in 2009, okay, when Azure was in its early stages, yeah. uh, uh, I was working for a consulting company, another consulting company at, th at that time, and I started to uh, look at uh, what is this thing called cloud computing and what is this thing called uh, Azure um, and how this um, will change the IT landscape of our customers, uh, what are the impact on our uh, customers and their operation. I started uh, evangelizing Azure to uh, our uh, C-suite. <laughs> so in order to for them to uh, be conscious of the, 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 the beginning of the cloud and uh, the impact it will have on our customers and our business. And I started my first uh, production project for customers uh, on Azure back in 2012 to 2012. Um, so, uh, since uh, uh, today, I'm working with Azure. I'm, I'm uh, from a developer background, okay? So yeah. one funny thing, uh, when uh, Azure first came out is uh, they IT pro guys uh, thought that they will be losing their jobs because uh, that was a big yeah, yeah, a yeah. topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We faced a lot of angry people who didn't understand why this thing is happening and they will lose their job and so on. But the fact is, they don't lose their job. Uh, if anyone look at uh, LinkedIn or uh, Indeed or any um, recruiting platform, you will see that there is an 
the, the demand for skilled IT pros on cloud, not only Azure, but also other clouds is exploding. Okay. What people, uh, what we, uh, what we told people at that time is your role, your job isn't in danger. Okay, what will happen? It's a shift of your role. You will have to uh, get new skills to, to, to change uh, the way you do some things. For example, it's no more plug, plugging cables and updating uh, uh, hardware and, and so on. So this, of course, is uh, now on the responsibility of the cloud provider, but you still have your uh, your uh, role, and you are you have more value um, to provide more value to the company rather than just focusing on the hardware, because the a company the its purpose, its sole purpose, is to provide um, value to their customer. Okay, the, your customer. I just to give an example that I used to say a lot. Um, any, uh, almost everyone uses uh, Netflix today, okay, or have a Netflix account or a Disney Disney Plus or a, a Hulu or uh, anything else, okay. Um, does that change uh, anything for you to know that they are hosting their own servers rather than using a cloud platform, or that they have top talented? people and uh, uh, cutting edge uh, hardware? No, as long as the service works, that uh, you, um, you have uh, the, the um, you, what you are paying for, which is entertainment. Huh? You can watch your favorite movie or favorite series. You don't care about what's happening in the company, what hardware they're running on and so on. So that's a shift in mentality, okay? Um, we often hear the, cattle versus pets uh, um, example. So uh, back in the old days, <laughs> IT pros used to um, take care of their servers and make sure they are uh, always up and running, update them as they become obsolete and so on. But now in the cloud era, we don't really care about that infrastructure. Okay, so it's there is an issue we just kill those VM and the, the spin up on uh, more VMs and uh, we keep going, okay? So that's the shift in mentality, but there are still uh, opportunities for all the existing uh, roles. Just people need to understand that there will be a shift in their uh, duties. So they have to learn new skills. They have to forget about some things that they used to do in favor of some new things that we they will have to do, and that's a bit complicated. So, uh, in the in um, the company I work for, Cofomo, we used to uh, help customers um, in their journey to the cloud. And one thing we noticed for the many years we are doing this right now, it's it's never a question of uh, skills or technology. It's always a question of people, mentality, and mindset. Okay. Um, most of the time we face uh, resistance uh, in people that they don't want to change their old habit, the thing they do and so on. So that's the hardest part. <laughs> but that's true in every aspect of, of business. It's, uh, I say this all the time that you know an organization that is good at change management at good at, and, and from a, not change management, from a technical change management, the broader statement of, you know, of change, managing change, identifying that change is going to come, interpret the impacts, build a plan, go with it, but you're continually looking at how are things changing? How do we need to change the business? Organizations that get good at that have a distinct competitive advantage over those that do not. I've worked in some organizations that were really good at that change function. And, uh, you know, they, there were other things that they weren't good at, but they were really good at that of constantly. It was part of operations management to continually looking at the business factors, the internal factors, the technology, the people, the process changes and, and making adjustments there. And so it was a great training ground for this was before I got into the SharePoint world and the Microsoft ecosystem. And it was, so it was good practice coming from that into 
into this space where change is just so rapid. There's so much going on. Yeah, that's the other side. I look at it. There's so much that's going on in the in the space. How can, how can you push back against change? I mean, you know, there's everything about our our world in the Microsoft ecosystem. There's just constant change that's going on. That, that's uh, very true, and uh, that the change um, accelerates uh, almost every year. So, uh, mm. what, one example I was asked um, a couple of days ago, uh, how do our um, customers would keep up with the rapid change of uh, .NET uh, versions? So right now it's about uh, one major version per year. So how yeah. will keep pace with that? Are they, are they um, forced to change or update their, their version each year? Uh, for small companies, it might be a, a, um, a couple of days effort, but uh, we work mainly with government agencies and we're talking about months and months of effort to, to bring a new version of that net uh, to, to their um, ecosystem. So that some, um, some uh, discussion that we need to have with our customers and uh, make them understand that um, there are no uh, LTS version versus non-LTS version. They have to understand that and make sure that uh, the version they choose uh, is really providing business value. Okay, not just uh, um, technical buzz. Okay, not just because our development team want to use the latest and greatest feature of .NET. It's not um, enough to decide to move to the latest version. Yeah. So uh, there are also um, things to be changed in the operation management at those companies. <clears throat> There's the yeah. I it impacts a lot of different levels. The training yeah. you have to do, the roles and responsibilities around that, as well as the solutions that you've developed around that. Well, it's yeah, very, very right. cool. Well, so let me tell you, in the couple of minutes that we have left, like, mm -hmm. so you so you talked about the Azure event. What other like community activities are you involved in? And what I, I'd also love to know is kind of what was your path to becoming an MVP? Was it, oh. it was there anything specifically that... <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, actually a, a great question. <laughs> so uh, just to, um, uh, to bring you a little bit about my background, I uh, started programming back in 1988. Okay, I was eight year old uh, <laughs> at that time. <clears throat> um, I, I'm, um, I'm sick with uh, asthma since I'm a very young kid. So um, back in the summer 1988, I was in a, a center for um, other uh, kids who are uh, have this uh, disease. And um, we had, it was all summer long, okay? And we had activities that were proposed by this center in order to keep us uh, entertained and uh, to learn new things, uh, open new horizons to us. And um, one day, uh, a teacher came uh, uh, came there and uh, he started teaching us programming, okay? It was on a, a Yamaha MSX keyboard. I don't know if you're if you already learned uh, knew about that it's a, a keyboard that you have to plug to a, a tv in order to have a display okay. and it's yep. basically had uh, only five applications uh, there was a, a game a, a text editor a drawing application uh, i don't remember the fourth one but the fifth one was um, a q basic compiler okay uh, <clears throat> And that's the one <laughs> I spent the most uh, of my time with. So it was, for me, it was fascinating. <clears throat> Sorry. It was fascinating to see that you can simply enter commands in plain English uh, to a computer and the computer respond back with, uh, uh, with uh, actions. It can do action that you tell him to do. Okay, that was... Yeah extraordinary for me so um, my first program and i was very proud of it was a basic calculator <laughs> i guess almost everyone after the the famous hello world we started to develop a, a basic calculator <laughs> and then um, a few years later 
my uh, parents offered me uh, my first computer. It was uh, back in 1997. Uh, uh, and I started to learn uh, Pascal at that time. I don't know if you know that language. Um, um, and then uh, C and C++. And, and uh, after that, I started to use Visual C++ 4. And when I started, I created my first uh, MFC application and you, it was basically uh, just um, a screen with one button on it and a message box that is displayed uh, as you click on the button. But it was so cool to see it uh, um, living right uh, by the side of uh, Word and Excel and other professional application. Okay, so that was awesome at that time. <laughs> uh, so I, I kept going like, like that, and it only grew my passion for computing. I guess. Um, and I'm the kind of guy that like to teach others. Okay, why? Because I truly believe that you learn more and better by trying to teach others. Yeah. Okay. Yep. If, if you try to explain something to someone, you have to think about it. How will I explain this to that person? What word would I choose? What example will I show him or her? And by doing this exercise, you may uh, find that there are some things that you think that you understand, but you don't truly understand. That well, that's, that's you... the thing. You may under you may think you understand it in your mind. Yeah. But then when somebody asks you to explain something, and you they're like, okay, like I thought I explained that aspect of it, and then you have to change the perspective on that. And uh, it, it, right, so it helps you kind of make your understanding of a topic more Ex robust, more sustainable. Exactly. That's exactly the thing. So um, I uh, I have this. Um this um, love of sharing uh, what I know, actually. So as soon as I learn something or understand something, I love to share it with other people, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's what uh, put me on the path to becoming an MVP. So uh, for many years, I, 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 I was a teaching professor and I um, wrote uh, blogs, uh, but for internal companies I, I worked for. So it was in internal blogs. I uh, gave a lot of presentations and, and so on. And uh, one day I met, I met with um, uh, Simran Chaudhary, which was the, the, uh, uh, the community manager for the um, uh, Canadian MVPs. Okay. And uh, I told him that and I told him that uh, I would be interested to apply for uh, uh, the MVP program. And he told me, okay, uh, the, all, all the things that you did are great, but it's not community activities, okay? So you have to share uh, your knowledge, your, your expertise with the world, not just with um, a closed community. So I started blogging, I started um, presenting at the community events and so on. Yep. Um, and uh, two years later, I, I applied for the MVP program and I was nominated. And that's what uh, put me on the path are. to well, become an MVP. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I mean, obviously, I, I, I love asking the question, the patterns are always the same. You know, it, it, the, like it's a very similar response, but I mean, that just should be reinforcing for people to know that by getting out there, as you said, like you're working in the technology, you're passionate about that, and you're sharing what you're learning along the way, teaching people, answering questions, asking questions, which yeah. a lot of times is just as important as answering questions yeah. um, and providing that feedback back to Microsoft and developing a relationship with Microsoft, which is also important as part of that. But that's those are true. similar patterns. Yeah, yeah that's a, for me, the, the most important uh, trait of uh, someone who wants to apply to be an MVP is the desire uh, to share what he knows, okay? And yeah. one thing, one uh, advi piece of advice uh, I want to, to share here is you don't need to be an expert in your area before you start sharing. Okay, 
you just have to share what you learned, what you know, and if you are uh, wrong, that's okay. The community will tell you and you will learn and everyone will learn uh, together. So be, uh, be bold, uh, uh, have the courage to, to uh, go out there and share with people and discuss with people and exchange idea. Some, because we know in, uh, in uh, our world, in the IT world, there are always more than one correct answer <laughs> yep that's great that's great insights there too and it, to john i really appreciate you taking the time to meet today as we wrap up so people want to get in touch with you what are the best ways to reach you via social yeah you can reach out to me either uh, either through linkedin or uh, through uh, twitter so it's a tjani underscore b so. excellent well it's great meeting you hopefully i will uh, we'll see each other maybe next spring at the next and be yeah, in person. I, I hope it happens. I would love to. I hope it will be an in-person event again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank well, you very much for having me, Christian. It was a, a, such a pleasure and an honor to be on your show today. Thank you very talk much. Talk to you soon. Bye. Talk soon. <laughs>